The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has begun preparations to remove the cover from a damaged reactor building. Once it's off, workers can start taking out contaminated debris and spent nuclear fuel. It's an important step in decommissioning the plant. The people who farm nearby are worried. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. Tokyo Electric Power Company installed the cover on the number one reactor to limit the release of radioactive materials. Workers on Wednesday began a multi-step process in preparation for removing the cover. TEPCO officials are planning to remove spent fuel from the building three years from now. To do that, they must first dismantle the cover and remove debris from inside. The utility initially planned to begin dismantling the cover in July, but officials delayed the start date so they could first take measures to reduce the risk of spreading radioactive dust. Ryoichi Sato grows rice in Minami Soma City, about 13 kilometers from the plant. The Japanese government has designated the area an evacuation zone, so he can't live there. But the government has allowed farmers to start growing crops on their fields. Sato and other farmers are concerned about what will happen when the cover is removed. All rice from Fukushima Prefecture has to be tested for radioactivity. Only the rice that clears the government's limit can be shipped. Last year, more than 99% of rice from prefecture cleared the test. But a small amount from Minamisoma was found to have more radioactive substances than the limit allows. Researchers say the substances may have been scattered when workers removed debris from the number three reactor building. Officials from TEPCO and the government have acknowledged that radioactive materials did escape, but they say they can't be certain that they contaminated the rice. But farmers weren't convinced. They met with government officials to voice their concerns. TEPCO is taking steps to ease the farmers' concerns. Workers will drill holes in 48 locations on the cover. In each hole, they will inject a chemical designed to keep radioactive dust from spreading. TEPCO says around the end of this month, workers will remove part of the cover and keep a close eye on the radiation levels. But Sato says he still has doubts. If another problem hit the plant, we farmers would be unable to work. I don't want the same thing to happen again. I hope TEPCO will take sufficient precautions. The company now plans to begin removing the cover in March. Officials say the entire process will take more than a year. Then in April 2016, workers will begin removing debris from inside. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Workers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant have been showing off new tools to tackle a growing problem. They added equipment to decontaminate more of water that's accumulating on the Fukushima Daiichi site, and they let the media see how they'll use it. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has the details. This is a new unit of ALPS, the Advanced Liquid Processing System. It's designed to remove most radioactive substances. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say it can treat 750 tons of water every day. Workers switched on their first ALPS unit in March last year. They've had to deal with a string of breakdowns. They showed the media their second unit. They're also building a third with higher performance. The extra units are essential. 300 tons of groundwater flows into the reactor buildings every day and gets contaminated. Workers store that water in tanks. They need to process over half a million tons. We're using a variety of equipment to try to decontaminate the water quickly. Workers also showed off another new tool. It decontaminates groundwater pumped up from wells around the reactor buildings and discharges it into the ocean. Over 40 wells surround the four reactor buildings. 
Workers stopped pumping up groundwater after the nuclear accident in 2011 because they found it contained radioactive substances. They started testing the decontamination system this August. They say it cuts most radioactive substances to a level too low to detect. Company representatives explained the system's capabilities to local fishermen, but couldn't ease all their concerns. For all of us in the fishing community, it's very important that the decommissioning of the reactors proceed smoothly. TEPCO officials must let us know more about the situation. Experts say decommissioning the plant will take 40 years, and the radioactive water is one of the biggest hurdles. Company executives say they'll keep making that water as clean as they can with help from the government. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World. Now, fishermen in Fukushima are also feeling the effects of their decommission process. They've been forced to change the way they work, and they are still un under strict rules about what they can catch. In this edition of Nuclear Watch, NHK World's Daisuke Kamikubo looks at how fishermen are trying to rebuild their industry. The port of Onahama in Iwaki City it's 50 kilometers south of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Fish are brought to the port four times a week. Fishermen call it test fishing. Right after the fish arrive, they are screened for radioactive cesium. At least one per species is tested from each section of the fishing grounds. We have a rocky road ahead, but we will display the spirit of fishermen. Fish that are confirmed safe can be shipped to consumers throughout Japan. Following the disaster, government officials established the world's strictest standards for radiation exposure for fish. It set a new limit on cesium. 100 becquerels per kilogram. Right after the accident, 53% of fish caught in Fukushima were above the government standard. The number has gradually declined to six-tenths of 1%. That's six fish in every thousand. The Fukushima Fisheries Federation set an even stricter limit, half the level set by the state. All fishing in the area was halted after the accident. Fifteen months later, it resumed with just three species, 50 kilometers out to sea north of Fukushima. The area has been gradually expanded. Now, fishing is allowed in almost all waters except those very close to the plant. Fishermen now catch 52 species, about one-fourth of what they could before the accident. We just have to go step by step. We have to go beyond making loud claims about the safety of fish from Fukushima. We should continue testing fish and prove they're safe, so consumers will eat them. But fishermen have yet to resume full-scale operations. They are not allowed to catch some species, including flounder. The total volume of the fishing is still only one and a half percent of what it was before the disaster. Fishermen say test fishing is necessary to rebuild the industry. Fishermen want to be fully back in business, but they face yet another hardship, a planned release of contaminated water from Fukushima Daiichi. Plant operator Tepco says there is no problem as radioactive substances have been removed from that water. But fishermen are not so sure. In August, Tepco officials said they might discharge groundwater that had accumulated in wells built around the plant's reactor buildings. They say the groundwater is contaminated but will be processed before it's released into the sea and over 500,000 tons of radioactive water is stored in the tanks. The operator says 
it will continue storing the water there. Local fishermen said they would never allow TEPCO to discharge the water into the sea. But they say they are not opposed to all of TEPCO's plans. We fishermen need to work hand in hand on decommissioning Fukushima Daiichi. We can't run away from the accident. If we wish to catch fish off Fukushima and sell them, we need consumers to know the fish are safe to eat. TEPCO executives say the decommissioning will take up to 40 years. Fishermen are closely watching how the work proceeds. Daisuke Kamikubo, NHK World, Onahama, Fukushima. The people who run a nuclear plant in northwestern Japan have opened their doors to showcase new safety measures. Their facility has been offline to have the Nuclear Regulation Authority check for preparedness in the event of a severe accident. And they're now undertaking a campaign to convince the public that they're ready to restart the reactors. NHK World's Kurando Tago reports. Diplomats from various countries got a first-hand look on Wednesday at TEPCO's nuclear plant in Niigata Prefecture on the coast of the Sea of Japan. The Kashiwaza Kariwa plant has seven reactors. During a tour, the group looked at the main anti-earthquake building that will serve as a command center in case of an emergency. They also viewed power vehicles, water pumps and flood barriers that can withstand a 15-meter tsunami. Why do you have them all together and not uh, nearer to the... In the case of an emergency, do you use all of them? Many had questions about the plant's safety. They wanted to know more about the specification of the equipment to be used in a disaster. It's hard for me to uh, make any judgments on this. Uh, I can only appreciate to gain access to uh, see uh, by my own. I was quite impressed by the reactors, turbine buildings, anti-tsunami and anti-seismic measures. I was also impressed with the firefighting systems at the facility. Japan has 48 nuclear reactors and all are currently offline. So far, the Nuclear Regulation Authority has seen application to restart 20 of them. Last September, TEPCO applied for the NRA screening process to restart two reactors at this plant. TEPCO's business has been deteriorating since the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident. A senior official says the company is taking its fate on the restart of the Kashiwaza Kariwa plant. The company wants to create an environment to achieve this goal by stressing the plant's safety. We organized today's event in the hope of letting people around the world know what type of measures we have taken at the nuclear power plant that we hope to restart. We want people to feel reassured. Plant operators in Japan still need to satisfy all mandatory government regulations. They include a re-examination of the faults that run under the facilities. They're working hard to win back public trust and improve safety measures. And they're communicating to the world the progress they're making to get the reactors safely back online. Grand Otago, NHK World, Niigata.
longer life is messy But if you are insisting on breaking down the patterns You can't do much better than the truth Learn the truth. Learn the truth. Learn the truth. 